We are making a pasta bolognese, a very authentic pasta dish from Bologna itself. A hearty meat sauce with some guanciale or pancetta, a touch of pork product, but that's up to you. Some garlic, some celery, some carrots, lots of red wine, touch of tomato paste, tomato product, and some milk to thicken it all up and make it extra special. Most important thing to do when you start cooking, always have your, all your ingredients prepped and ready to go before you hit the stove. First, we're gonna dice up our vegetables, our onions, our carrots, and celery. Some people like to put all the vegetables right into the food processor, but as far as I'm concerned, when this dish was created many years ago, they didn't have food processors. So take your time, it's something so satisfying about just dicing a perfect onion. There's something about making pasta bolognese that just brings back so many fond memories. I'm not sure if it's that, but just dicing this very aromatic medallion onion. But that's what food does. It brings out emotion. For the record, dice your onion last so you're not sitting here with a pile of onion fumes in your face. We have our onion diced. Now it's time to dice up our celery. I think about four or five stalks should be plenty to round out our mirepoix, celery, onions, and carrots. Always the base, the foundation for lots of cooking. Nice fine dice on the celery. Celery, carrots, and onions should all be the same size. Creates for uniform cooking and texture. Bolognese is very similar to a meat ragu sauce, but with the addition of milk and usually a little bit of pork product. I'm gonna dice up our carrots, super fine dice. Whenever you're dicing, fold your fingernails over. They become a natural barrier for the knife. Your nails guide the knife. Because the last thing you want to do is cut your fingertip off because it won't stop bleeding for about a week and a half and nobody wants that. The more effort you put into a sauce, the better it's usually going to taste. It wouldn't be a bolognese without lots of shaved garlic. I'm going to use about 10 cloves of fresh garlic. Just cut them as thin as you can. If you want to use a razor blade like Paulie or Goodfellas, go for it. Or a mandolin. You could use a garlic press, but I just take a thin as you can slice it with a knife, you're good to go. Chop up carrots, celery, and some white onion for the bolognese base. We're gonna take some fresh herbs, some fresh rosemary, oregano, and just tie them up into a little sachet. Sachet, sachet, it's a fun word to say. And also, you can remove it easily from the sauce without having to pick out all those herbs. It also makes a nice little corsage if you go into the prom. All right, we're moving over to the stove. We have all of our ingredients prepped and ready to go. We are ready to start cooking. First, we have a nice hot pan. We need to brown our beef. We're gonna hit it with some extra virgin olive oil. This pan has been getting nice and hot. As soon as it's lightly smoking, that's when you add your meat to the pan. Hot pan, cold oil. Oh, you see that smoke? I see that smoke. Don't add your beef to the pan unless your pan is smoking. Don't add your beef to the pan unless your pan is smoking. Time to add the beef. If it doesn't sound like this, your pan wasn't hot enough. Slap it out, break it up. Let's get some real caramelization on that beef. We had a nice hard sear on one side. Our meat is nice and caramelized. Check out that color over there. Our meat is beautifully browned on both sides. We're gonna remove it before we add the pancetta. We're gonna go right in with our pancetta, which is just cured pork belly. Not smoked like bacon, just cured. We're gonna render down the pancetta until it gets nice and crispy, then start to add our vegetables. Our pancetta is rendered down, time to add the celery. Give that celery about a minute head start, then we're going right in with the carrots. Just make sure when you're throwing all your vegetables, nothing's burning, nothing's sticking to the side, everything should be at the base of the pan. We added our celery and carrots to the rendered pancetta. Now it's time to add the onion. Last but not least, 
Lots of shaved garlic with the onions, the carrots, the celery, and the pancetta. We're gonna turn this down to a medium heat. Really important to let those vegetables gently roast so they become nice and tender, and that garlic gets nice and golden. After your vegetables are nice and roasted, and that garlic is nice and golden, we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of tomato paste. That tomato paste is starting to lightly caramelize on the bottom of the pan. Now it's time to add back in our ground beef. We got our beef back in the pan. Now it's time to add lots and lots and lots of a hearty red wine. You want to reduce the red wine down by half. Just remember, if it's not good enough to drink, it's not good enough to cook with. Once we add the red wine, we're gonna season it up with lots and lots of cracked black pepper and a sprinkling of kosher salt. Our wine is reduced by half. Now it's time to add some Jersey crushed tomatoes. Jersey strong, everybody. We're tossing in our fresh herbs, our dried bay leaves, a pinch of chili pepper flake, and some chicken stock. Let it reduce down, let it thicken up, let those flavors develop. Notice we've bundled those herbs up into a little sachet so we get the flavor and it's easy to remove without having to pick them all out one by one. It's been about 10 minutes, our bolognese is simmering away. Now it's time to add half the milk. We're gonna let that reduce and then follow it by the other half of the milk. We added half the milk to help thicken it and add a whole other layer of richness. It's been about 10 minutes, we let that milk reduce. Now we're gonna add that last bit to thicken it up. We're gonna let this simmer on a low heat, make sure all those vegetables and the meat become extremely tender and those flavors combine really, really nicely. We're gonna come back in 10 minutes, give it a little stir, make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom of the pan. A couple hours later, our bolognese is beautiful. Time to remove that little herb sachet. Get rid of that, we're gonna cook off our pasta and bring it on home. It ain't pasta bolognese, without a little pasta. Heavily salted water, always. Hit it with the rigatoni. Give it a little stir. And we're gonna cook this till it's nice and al dente. Most importantly, we're gonna finish it in the sauce. We got our pasta cooking. We got our bolognese ready to rock. We're gonna take some of our bolognese. We're gonna throw it in the saute pan. Just enough, I got a pound of pasta cooking. We'll see how much we're gonna add. Go about the ratio, bring it all up, let it simmer, make sure our pasta is nice and al dente, finish it in the sauce. Our bolognese is ready. Always taste your noodle. Taste your noodle, I know it's hot. It's perfectly al dente. We're gonna finish it in the sauce, right? Don't be afraid to get some of that pasta water in there. Makes it all come together. Give it a little toss. We want the right proportion of noodles to meat. Make sure you always save that pasta water. Starchy goodness helps thicken the pasta. Let's bring this on home. We got a rigatoni mixing with the bolognese. We need a little bit of that starchy pasta water. A little bit, bring it on home. Always a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Continue to let it cook. We're gonna hit it with a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. Some fresh chopped parsley. Just a little more parm, a little more parsley. Let's bring it on home. Make sure all those noodles are evenly coated. Always give it a final taste before we go to the plate. Good. Pick up two bolognese.
today is table 12. Let's go to the plate. We are ready to go. Most importantly, always finish the pasta in the pan with the sauce, with the starchy water. Let it all marry together. Never just put a pile of noodles in the bowl with a ladle of sauce on the top. That's not a bowl of pasta. This is a bowl of pasta. Only one thing left to do, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. The more cheese, the more better. The more better, the more cheese. A little scoop of ricotta over the top wouldn't hurt nobody either. Let's eat. But let's dive on into this bowl of pasta. It's like we just got off the plane and landed in Bologna. This is one you gotta try at home. It is so rich, it is so satisfying. Yeah, it takes a little while. It's called the labor of love, but the proof is in the pudding. Trust me, let me know how good it is. And by the way, the leftovers, put them in a baking dish. A little Parmesan, a little ricotta. You'll have one of the most incredible baked zinis you've ever had in your entire life, and you can thank me later. I'll see you in Bologna.